All right, welcome to the, the Couch, Couch Potato, Potato Lab. Lab, the show where we bring the science to you. Uh, so last uh, uh, Tuesday was our first ever live stream. Uh, and before we started today, we just wanted to give an extra big thank you to everyone that uh, tuned in or gave us suggestions or questions. We really appreciate it. Uh, we really appreciate you being so patient with all of the technical issues. We knew that we had some to begin with. Uh, we're, we're still figuring things out, so we appreciate your uh, patience. So, uh, welcome everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, before we get into this, uh, there, just like Tuesday, there will be a lab manual for today's activity. Uh, it is called A Wacky Way to Way, uh, and you could find it under the description on our YouTube, which you probably are on right now. So uh, it's just right there, bit.ly backslash couch potato lab. So you could follow along. Uh, make sure you have all those materials with you. And uh, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, because we do love uh, hearing from our audience all across Saskatchewan, uh, you could tweet us, uh, Instagram message us, and Facebook messenger us. Uh, at Eyes Youth, uh, using the hashtag Couch Potato Lab if you are tweeting. We would love to hear from you. Okay. All right, so uh, let's get started. Let's start to my left here. Who do we got? Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Kavina, and my pronouns are she, her. And you want a fun fact about me? Yeah. Fun fact about me, there is not one food in the world that I don't like. I'll eat anything. Anything? Even octopus? I'll try it. Yep. Oh. Actually, I like... I think I like octopus. Oh. Yeah, put some barbecue sauce on it. I'm sure. how, about, how about mushrooms? I'll eat mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Pepperoni. I love pepperoni. Okay, all well, of them. It sounds like Kobe is uh, going to be cooking up a storm for us later. <laughs> uh, my name is Tom. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. And fun fact about me is that I'm currently sitting in a tide pool right now, but you can't see because I'm at a desk. <laughs> And who do we got to the right of me? Hello, everybody. My name is Kobe. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. And something that I made today for this live stream is this animal. <laughs> Look at this animal. It's so cute. <laughs> so I made this animal, and I want you, the audience and viewers, to kind of guess what animal I made. It has, like, really big eyes. I don't know what these are. It could be ears. <laughs> Maybe it's a wing. I don't know. And I got some, some like, you know, uh, it's all made out of like a uh, egg carton. So like, for sure, um, tweet us, hashtag Couch Potato Lab, and tell me what you think mm. I made today. You know what? I'm going to send in a tweet too. All right. So what do you it. think? I'll tweet it. Go okay. Easy. All right. I can't wait. All right. So to begin, um... We like to re um, first recognize that this live stream and eyes as a program is operating on Treaty 4 land. This is the traditional territory of the Nahiawak, Nakawe, Dakota, Nakota, and Lakota peoples, and the traditional homeland of the Métis Michif Nation. So we are so grateful to be able to share this space with all these peoples and to recognize that our audience, our viewers, come from a various numbered treaties, from treaties um, made between the Crown and the Sovereign Indigenous Nations, as well or on unceded territory. So we're so happy and thankful for you um, to take this moment to recognize this and being with us here today. So thank you so much. All right, I think let's start this off. Um, Kavina, I heard that you have a riddle for us. Yep. Uh, I am ready, I, my brain is warmed up. I All right. told you guys about this yesterday. You've been thinking about it? Uh, yeah. Yes. Every, okay, every I'll single remind minute you what it is. I'll remind the audience as well. The riddle is, what weighs heavier, 100 grams of rocks or 100 grams of cotton balls? Hmm. Rocks or cotton balls? What's heavier, 100 grams of each? <coughs> you know, I'm going to take a guess, and I'm going to say the rocks, uh, because, you know, like my grandpa always says, there's nothing heavier than a pile of rocks. <laughs> so I'm just going to go by that scientific method right there. Um, I'm going to have to disagree with you, Tom. I think that the pound of feathers is probably going to be the answer. She's probably, like, tricking us, I right? Ooh, like, you think, you, think, you think, like, rocks are heavy? No, JK, it must be the feathers. The feathers. Lock in my answer. <laughs> Kavita, what you is the answer? Lock it in? Yeah, lock it in. So Kobe's guessing 
feathers or cotton balls. <laughs> and Tom's grandpa says rocks. Tom's grandpa says okay. rocks. Okay, and Kobe thinks it's a trick question. Turns out it, it is a trick <laughs> question. I'll show you why. Okay, so I have here uh, my scale, the digital scale, and it's going to tell us how many grams I've put into this container. Now, I, I said 100 grams, uh, but let's measure out 50 grams of, sure. of each instead. Okay, okay. sounds good. Because um, I don't know if I have 100 grams here. So fi what weighs heavier, 50 grams of rocks or 50 grams of cotton balls? <laughs> The trick question is, it's 50 grams of each. They both weigh 50 grams. What? Oh, so what? So neither Got me is there. heavier. <laughs> so that's, I'll show you right now. So 50 <laughs> grams of rocks looks like that. This is 51 grams of rocks. That's 50 grams right there. And 50 grams of cotton balls is still going to weigh 50 grams. So it's not going to be heavier or lighter, <laughs> but you will notice when I weigh out 50 grams, it's going to take up a lot more space. Ooh. That huh. is only 27 grams. So what I'm you're saying is that there's, there's more cotton balls and less rocks, but they weigh the same thing. So yeah. uh, are, are we talking about mass here? Is that you're what right. we're talking about? You're right, Tom. Yes, we're talking about mass. Cool. So mass is, you know what mass is. Uh, absolutely. Uh, mass is, I guess in technical terms, uh, how much something weighs. It is the amount of uh, molecules that make up an object, uh, if you want to get super specific. But if we just want to keep things nice and simple, let's just think of mass as how much an object weighs. Yeah, so in this uh -huh. example here, the mass of these objects is the same. 50 grams and 50 grams. But, Kobe, do you want to tell the folks at home, there's something different about these objects. Yes, because the it's... The mass is the same, but... It seems that, like, the container, um, there's more cotton balls involved in the container, and there's less rocks in the container, but they both weigh the same amount. So their yeah. volume is yep. different. So maybe the cotton balls would fill up the container more. So that's pretty much what volume is, how much an object takes up space. So the cotton balls would take up more space, but the rocks, on the other hand, would take up less space. Yes. So the volume is greater for cotton balls, but less compared to the rocks um, for the samples that we had right there. Is that correct, Kavina? You are correct. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. So there's a difference between mass and volume. And lots of the time, you can trick your friends. You can ask them the same question. You could ask them, what weighs heavier, a pound of brick or a pound of feathers? And because they know feathers are lighter in mass, they, they think that they'll be lighter if they weigh a pound. But it's really, the, the, you just need more <laughs> of them to equal a pound. So volume and mass, what you all need to know at home, volume and mass are two different things. They are not the same, but somehow they are related. Excellent. Uh, and today's activity is going to be all about that. Again, it is called A Wacky Way to Weigh. Uh, you can download it. It's in our YouTube description. Uh, again, just going to do a quick shout out to all of our social media. Uh, as you can see on the screen below me, that is our handle for uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and the good old YouTube. So today's activity uh, is about, well, Kavina just put it away, but we're going to be essentially making a scale, something to uh, weigh two objects, and it could be used using everyday household materials. So, uh, Kobe, what do we got here? All right, so what you need for this activity is a clothes hanger, um, any size clothes hanger. You're going to need two cups, and make sure that they're a plastic so that we can make holes with them. And in order to make those holes, you might be using a hole puncher or maybe um, scissors. But if you're using scissors, make sure your parents are using it instead of you just to be safe or, um, or make sure that they're supervising. Yeah. The next thing that you'll probably need is string. So right here I have yarn or string, anything like that works. Um, we're going to describe um, how long you'll need later on. Um, and the next thing that you need is tape. So just a little bit of tape to um, stick things on to the clothes hanger later on. Right. Um, did I miss anything? Tom? Can I add one thing? Yes, Kavina, go ahead. Um, one thing. Uh, string, I've been in a situa 
situation before when you're making crafts and you don't have string on hand, that's when you can figure out you can uh, figure out using your engineering brain. Maybe you can use dental floss. Maybe you can use uh, like a, a rag and cut it into strips and use that instead of string. So get creative. If you don't have the materials, don't fret. Find something else to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Use that uh, inner engineer inside you to figure out a uh, solution to that problem. So uh, the first step is, of course, we're going to take our string and we're going to cut it uh, to be the length of two of our arm lengths. So uh, probably forearm to fingertips twice. I think that's how we measured it, wasn't yeah. it? So you want to look at me, camera? Oh, there we are. <laughs> okay, so I have one length of string and then I just grab this end here and then I measure another length. Yeah. So it's about two arm lengths. Yeah. And then uh, once you have completed that, take your two cups, uh, preferably plastic cups, because this next part is important. Uh, you'll want to poke two uh, holes, as you can see on either side of this right here. Uh, two holes just with scissors. Uh, if you aren't comfortable with scissors, please get your parents or guardians to help with that. Now, um, normally we would just tell you to, to assemble these components, but uh, the two scientists to my left and my right, they're pretty experienced in building stuff. So <laughs> I... Uh, I came up with a little challenge today. Ooh, what's the challenge, no. Tom? I'm, oh, no. I'm a little nervous now. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you can see here, I got some blindfolds and I have some oven mitts. Uh, what? Your, what? your challenge today is <sighs> one of you will be blindfolded and have to make the scale. <laughs> and the other one. <laughs> well, I thought uh, this was going to be a simple task. Yeah, what the heck? It's going to take longer than expected. <laughs> it's going to take longer than expected uh, with twice the hilarious results. So <laughs> now, to choose uh, which one you get, uh -huh. you have to answer uh, this question. And it's based on how well do you know your good buddy, Tom? Oh, oh, pretty well. oh gosh. <laughs> All right. Uh, what was my uh, time in the 100 meter dash at my grade eight city track and field finals? Buzz, 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 uh, buzz. Oh, thanks. Yes, okay. I know you're faster than Usain Bolt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were you at the what Olympics were you at again? All of them. <laughs> All Olympics. Okay, so yeah, it was about uh, ten point seven eight seconds, if I can remember correctly. Okay, okay. Oh it's Kobe, Kobe. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure you're thinking about somebody else because Tom is extremely slow. He's <laughs> slower than a slug. So I think that your time is probably um thirty minutes. <laughs> hmm. You know, uh, I would be offended if that wasn't the truth. So, Kobe, uh, you did win. It was <gasps> just about yes! 30 minutes. Nice. Um, apparently, I ran the complete opposite way <laughs> of all the other participants, and I ended up in Esteban. <laughs> That's life. Uh, so, Kobe, what do you want? Do you want the blindfold or the oven mitts? Ooh, actually, um, I want you to pick for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by its toe. If it hollers, let it go. Uh, mm. Blindfold. <laughs> ah, <yes. laughs> oh, dang it. Thank you. Yes. So that means oh, that you get the mitts. Oh, thank you. This, oh, you know what? <laughs> Let's respect our social distancing. Um, I think you got a tool, don't you, Tom? I do. I Toss do. it over with your tool. I got this. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> got to load it on there. Got to gotta load it on there. Um. <laughs> Slip them on the end. That'll work, that'll work. That's gonna work. I'm that's, not moving. That's gonna work. Come on. <laughs> oh. Nice. Hey, okay. Hey, it worked. <laughs> okay. It worked. Thank you, Tom. You're Thank welcome. You. This was worth it. All right. Yes, once I put these on, there's no going back. Is there a time limit for this challenge? Because I don't think, uh, is there? You know, uh, I being the lord of time and space, <laughs> uh, you know, I will set a, a, pre, like a, a pretty nice time limit. How would you say uh, maybe like five-ish minutes? Five? Yeah, five. we'll see where we're at. Okay. Maybe we'll see where we're at in five. Then we might have to beg Tom for some more time. Absolutely. Yes. I so, think Kobe's going to need it. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, let's get five minutes on the clock uh, now. Thank you very much. All oh, right, sorry. blindfolds okay. on, Tom, mitts on your mitts. Um, where do we start? What was the first step again? Yeah. Right. First step is you are going to take your coat hanger and you are going to uh, drape the string 
over the coat hanger. <laughs> okay. Just Are like that. Stuck? Just like it's that, Kavina. Stuck. No. Okay. Draped over. Just like, like this. that. And then you want to put it to one side. Okay. Just like that. Sweet. All right. Perfect. Toby, put your blindfold on. Oh, oh, we're starting. Me? No. <laughs> if I have my oven mitts on, you gotta have your blindfold right. on. Right. Yes. Cheater. I'm not cheating. All right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a tiny little sliver of tape and we're gonna secure that oh. uh, piece of string <laughs> to the top. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Okay. Is oh, my yeah. of tape. This is, is this, good. Is this okay? That is more than okay. Uh, it's a little big, but you know, cut that in half. That is perfect. How about this? Is this good? <laughs> yes, that's perfect. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, and then repeat that for the other side. And while they're okay. doing that, uh, we have our fan favorite, Luke the Donut. They, Luke, uh, just, what's up, Luke? They tweeted at us. Uh, they think that that animal that Kobe <gasps> made <gasps> is an owl. Kobe, is that correct? Um, Luke, you are 100% correct. It's an owl. Woo! Very All good. Right. Shout Woo! out, Luke the Donut. Luke, nice. if you want to um, direct message, or private message us your address, maybe we can mail it on over to you. <laughs> maybe? Yeah, maybe. We'll, we'll see what our boss says. There is yeah. a boss involved here. We you don't know, get to make all the decisions. Uh, and you know what? Uh, this is also very important. Just because uh, I'm making my two good friends here wear blindfolds and oven mitts does not mean that you have to. Uh, <laughs> please use your eyes and your regular hands, not your cooking hands, uh, to do this activity. That would be great. So, hey, hey, Tom. Yes. Um, so since you're sitting in a pool right now, mm -hmm. I, there's something like green, I think. I hear like some weird splashing noises. Oh, like an alligator. Like an alligator. Oh, no. Are Is there an alligator? an alligator? Yeah, Tom. Oh, alligator. No. Oh, no. Look. I should <laughs> turn around. <laughs> Do you see the alligator? Oh, I hear its roar. No, not yet. Roar. But I should just keep looking away, shouldn't I? Oh, yes. You should... Yes, please look away. You need to yeah, catch all that attention. Yeah, Make keep sure your you're... eye on the alligator. Yeah, because well, you have the eye of a tiger. <laughs> it's true. Oh. He's turning back, he's turning back. <laughs> well, we got, we got rid of that problem, uh, thanks to the good people at Animal Control. Uh, all right. Okay. So, Tom, what's next? Yeah, Our next step is... Watch that step. That was easy. <laughs> that was an easy step. <laughs> so that looks perfect where we are right now. Uh, so let's <coughs> now attach both of the cups, one on either side of the strings, by putting the strings through and double knotting it. We got two more minutes. Kay. So <laughs> two minutes. Tom, I got a question here. Absolutely. I have four strings now, four yes. ends. So are you saying attach one cup to this end and then one cup to this end? Absolutely not. Uh, oh, okay. So you're going to attach uh, one cup per side. So that's why we made two holes uh, mm. in each cup. So Got it, got it. <laughs> Sorry, what'd you say again? So uh, <laughs> one string for one hole in the cup. Ah. And then uh, if you can't tie knots or anything like that, please get a, a parent or guardian to help with that. Uh, if your real hands are oven mitts, this would be a good time to ask for a parent or guardian. But unfortunately, uh, Kavina, your mom isn't here today. Mom! <laughs> Mom was mad at me last week. You remember that? When I took two, four jelly beans home? Did you I mean, take... Four, I took four jelly beans to the lab, and my mom was not too happy about that. Did you secretly bring more jelly beans for us? Ah, I should have. You know, uh, we have one minute left, supposedly, and we are nowhere near being done. Oh, no. Oh, so I'm going to give it at least two more minutes. Two more minutes. All right, thank Thanks, you, DJ. Tom. You're so generous. Kobe, how are you doing over there? I am killing it. You want to... Kev? Okay, you too. <laughs> I'm doing so great. This was a good idea, I think. <laughs> this was torture. Okay. Um, um, I gotta do this three more times. Three more times? So, uh, again, <sighs> like with knots. our activity that we did last week, we would love to see your final designs. These suggestions, or these steps are really suggestions, so uh, if you want to try using different materials, say you don't have a coat hanger, and you have, uh, like, a... I don't know. What else could you supplement for a Is coat a hanger? A coat hanger? Yeah. A doorknob. A doorknob, yeah. Any something as simple yeah. as a doorknob. Something for just something to, to rotate off of. You could use a bike wheel. You could use your bike. 
Um, you could use like a ruler or something. You could even use a ruler. We just need something as simple as that. Just use your inner engineering brain. And again, uh, right. this if you have any questions at all, our number is down on the screen. Uh, text it at 306-570-1013. That is our for real uh, <laughs> phone number. So make sure that you use that. Again, feel free to tweet us questions uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm just tying my shoe. Absolutely. Uh, Monsieur Time God. Yes. I think I finished. I think Kobe I, is also yeah, done. I'm oh, just, look at that. I'm just here tying my shoe. Absolutely. Don't worry about me. Uh, nothing suspicious about tying nothing your shoe. Nothing suspicious about this at all. So uh, while we wait for Kavina, uh, who is tying her shoe, yeah, Kobe, I'm, you're one step ahead of me. We're now going to put our scale on something that can, it, it can hang off of. So again, a doorknob, a piece of wood like we have here. Uh, make sure that it's secure, that, that thing that you're going to hang it off of, because we don't want our weigh scale uh, hanging off whatsoever. Sorry, I'm tying six shoes down here. Kavina, are you cheating? Cheating? What? <gasps> I'm Could not a cheater. You? No? Okay, never mind. So, you know so me, wow. Do you need some help <laughs> tying your shoe? <laughs> Oh, I, oh, if you have there. any uh, tips on how to tie your shoe or she anything like that for girl. Kavina, please uh, <laughs> use use the hashtag Couch Potato Lab, uh, hashtag Kavina Tie Your Shoes. Uh, we would love to hear your tips and tricks. But also, uh, if you have any questions for us at all about anything, please feel free to shoot us a message. Oh, you're done. And. My shoes are tied. Wow, good job. Yeah. Oh, we have a question. It <coughs> uh, doesn't matter if the strings are different lengths. Okay. I thought about this. It does and it doesn't. As long as they're quite similar, it'll be all right. Um, when we're testing to see which object is heavier, you can just watch the, the line of the clothes hanger here. So the heavier object, object is going to weigh down the side. And then you can just look at the clothes hanger here. So All if right. these cups are longer or shorter, it doesn't really matter. All right. Thank you for your question. Um, all right. So are, are we both complete? Have we both completed our scales? What do you think, Tom? Yeah, I think that is beautiful. Any that critiques? looks great. Um, Folks at home, any critiques? No. Looks good. Looks Thank good you. to me. Love it. Now feel free to put that on that plank of wood mm -hmm. and secure it if you have any tape left. Dude. Yeah, so we're using planks of wood today instead of doorknobs. Uh, normally, you could just hang this on a doorknob, um, but I don't see any doorknobs here today. So. Uh, we have another question. Uh, Kavina, where are you really tying your shoe? Yeah, look, they're tied now. <laughs> or is there some <laughs> ulterior motive? <laughs> All right. Nope, it's tying my shoes. All right, we, we will believe her for now. Okay. So, um... This looks great and everything, but a scale is made to weigh, is it not? It is made to weigh. Yes. Do you have anything that we can weigh it with? Oh yes. Did, yes. did we bring any fun objects? You know, let's start oh, with yeah. uh, let's start with Kobe. Kobe, what did you bring today? Today I brought my favorite fruit. They are apples. I love apples so What's much. Your favorite fruit? Yeah. Apples are so good. <laughs> An apple a day keeps the doctor away since this is a tough time nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the next thing I brought was cotton balls as well. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. So we're going to test to see which is heavier, <laughs> an apple <gasps> or a big cup of cotton balls. Tom, what do you think is going to be heavier? Well, uh, you know, I'm going to have to say the apple because that, that apple looks nice and ripe and juicy, so I think it's going to be uh, full of mass. Full of mass. All the this mass in the world. All the mass in the <laughs> world. <laughs> this kind of is like our riddle now, because they both take up about the same amount of space, right? A cup mm -hmm. of cotton balls and an apple. So now, we're not testing the volume anymore, we're just testing the mass, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I feel like my cup of cotton balls is not enough. I think I need more. Can you you want some? I see your pile of cotton balls. I would love Tom. some. Okay, your job, Tom, <laughs> is try to pick some of these up. Or I'll load it up for you. Yeah. You <laughs> send them on over to Kobe. All right, so for those folks at home that have a 3D TV, you're in for a treat. <laughs> Whoa. Yes. Yes, Kobe. Thank you. Uh, 
<laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right. Let me just stuff Stop that it. in there. Okay, so now the cotton balls are taking up more volume than the apple. Yes. So maybe, maybe the results will change. Maybe that's taking up more space. Maybe it will weigh more. So what do you think, Vina? Do you think the apple's going to weigh more or this cu cup of cotton balls? Hmm. I'm going to say cotton balls are going to weigh more. Cotton balls are going to weigh more. Because they are taking more. up way more volume. How much are you going to bet? I'm willing to bet... Um, I'm going to give you these oven mitts because I don't want them. <laughs> if I'm wrong, I'm going to give you these oven mitts. And you know, we have a, a, a poll on our Twitter right now saying what is heavier, uh, the apple or the cotton ball. So feel free to uh, answer that poll right away. All right, I'm going to test them out. Okay. roll. Okay. Okay, cotton ball's in here. Oh my, so heavy. <laughs> It's barely weighing down the, <laughs> the hanger. Let me Cotton just uh, keep going. Oh, now it's really weighing down the hanger. Oh, yeah. Uh oh, okay. So cotton balls versus an empty cup. Cotton balls are heavier. Okay, got it. All right, the next thing. La Palm. La Palm. Little apple. <laughs> For all the francophones at home, uh, that's an apple. <laughs> Ba bam oh, I'm gonna oh, oh. oh gosh. Okay, so obviously <laughs> the apple is heavier. Much wow, heavier. significantly heavier. Kobe, do you want to show the folks at home like how you can tell that it's heavier based <clears> on <throat> what the hanger looks All like? All right. So how you can tell is that because this apple is heavier, there's more gravity happening acting upon this apple. So it's pulling it closer to the earth and dropping it down a lot more than these cotton balls. So that means the cotton balls doesn't have a lot of mass, so gravity isn't acting upon it as much. So that's why the apple is heavier. Correct, Kavina? I'd say so. Round of applause for Kobe. It is our good friend, good explanation. gravity. All right. A plus on that. Kev, what yeah. do you got for us? I have a piece of toast Ooh. and a metal spoon. Nice. Now, Ooh. Um, folks that watched last week, we talked about density a little bit and we'll explain that a little more at the end of this episode but we do know that metal is a lot denser than other materials when it's denser it does it can weigh more so we got a nice dense metal spoon and then we got a piece of toast now the piece of toast it takes up more <coughs> volume than the spoon does so i'd like to know if it takes up more volume will it weigh more mm -hmm. let's find that out that is a good question uh, let us know on all of our social media all right camera you ready for this? So I think that the bread is probably going to be heavier than the spoon because the bread has lots of multi-grain grains. This does? It is. Yeah. 100% whole grain made from our local baker. Okay, we got... Whoa, there he is. Okay, we got our toast on one side. Ooh, fit it in the cup. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. That is... That is some well, I'm heavy bread. Now, <laughs> our metal spoon. Oh, uh -oh. Okay, I'm gonna let it just settle. Oh, it's pretty Ooh, close. close. That hey? is pretty close. Come I would on, say, bread. Get a nice close view. Um, I would say this side is a little more sunken down. Interesting. Tom, what do you think? Um, you know, just looking on our monitor here, it, it looks like yeah, the spoon is a bit heavier than the bread. But again, uh, our, ask, our, our, um, our ask for, or not our ask for, uh, we asked earlier, uh, feathers uh, are heavier than rocks, right? So we know that, right? What? Feathers or, are heavier than rocks? Uh, the, the riddle with the feathers <laughs> and the rocks, right? Oh, yeah, the riddle about that it, That whole yeah. thing. Uh, we have a viewer wondering, uh, are feathers heavier than cotton balls? Ooh. Well. I would like to weigh in. Yeah. I think, think the feathers are probably going to be heavier because it has that kind of like the stem part, <gasps> yeah. right? The cotton balls don't have that. So maybe the, because of that stem, it's going to be a, a lot more mass acting upon There's more mass and more gravity acting upon it. So it has to be feathers. That's my guess. All right. That is a great good one, Kobe. guess. Mm. <clears throat> Kobe, did you bring uh, more materials to weigh? Oui, oui. Um, so the next thing that we're going to test is different liquids. Um, so we're going, to, we're going to make sure that we're having a lot of controls. So, so we're going to make sure that both volumes are 
80 milliliters, <laughs> milliliters. <laughs> and I have two um, beakers right here. All right, um, so right here I have water. And the next thing I'm going to pour is soda some pop? soda pop. Looks like my favorite flavor. Beer, 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 beer. Caramel color. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of like gas happening here. So there's liquid and gas. So because of this, Ooh. what do you think, Tom? Do you think that the soda is going to be heavier or the water? You know, um, I'm just thinking about the states of matter. I often think about the states of matter. <laughs> um, you know, we have solid, we have liquid, and we have gas. And classically, gases are uh, lighter than solids and liquids. So I'm, I'm going to mm -hmm. say that it's going to give it that home field advantage, and it's going to be lighter than the water. So the soda is Kevin. Heck okay. yeah, Tom. I think so as well. I think, yeah, the gas bubbles barely have any mass to them. So if you've got gas in there, then there's less mass. So yeah, gas is gonna be, the pop's going to be less weight. Pop's going to be less weight. All right, let's test it out. Test dun it out. Dun it, dun it, dun Bring it on over to our dun it, dun scale. Dun it, dun it. <laughs> Focus at home, we have, a, we have a TV in front of us of exactly what you're seeing as well. So we get to see ourselves on TV. And it's kind of fun to watch. It is very <laughs> cool to see myself on TV. Uh, we have a quote. That's right, a quote from Rex, just while you're loading that in. What's up, Rex? Uh, Rex says, what is mind? No matter. What is matter? Never mind. <laughs> Words of wisdom. <laughs> Words of wisdom. All right. Nice. All right, so we got some water in there. Water looks heavy. Next is the pop. Mm. Oh, shoot. I have to wash this later. That is okay. <laughs> Dang. Pop. Oh. Oh. <gasps> Kobe, I wish I could help you, but I got to stay away from you. Oh. oh. So oh. It, it, it almost looks like the, the pop is heavier than the water, uh, if I'm mistaken. Tom, take one more look at that. Uh, I'm trying. So it looks like the water <laughs> is heavier than the pop. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the this is side. the water, and this is the pop right here. So it as is. you can see, that water is heavier than the pop. So maybe cool. that, yeah, because of the gas molecules, it's probably making a lot lighter. Yeah, yeah filling up a bit more volume. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think our hypothesis was right. Good Ooh, job, team. Nicely done. Safe. Well Woo, done. Nice. All right, Kavina, what do you have next? Got one. Yeah. Okay. You got one more. I got oil and ha -ha, shaving cream. Hmm. Okay. Both of these, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Oil versus shaving cream. You know, I'm going to go with shaving cream is going to be a little bit lighter. Just again, uh, you got all that gas, you got all that air inside of it that I think is going to give it a big uh, leg up. It's going to make it nice and fluffy. Oil is quite dense. It's denser than water, some would say. Yeah. Um, is, it? is it? I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, viewers at home, uh, is oil denser than water? Please let us know <laughs> because that is a very common fact that I should know. Again, <laughs> our handle is Eyes Youth. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Tom, I think you just needed one more cup of coffee, coffee this morning and your brain would have been like, Oop, I know the answer. Because oil is for sure less dense than it water. It is. And <laughs> folks at home, if you want to test that out, all you got to do is take a cup of water and pour some oil in slowly and see which one rises to the surface. Kind of like if you threw a beach ball in a pool, the beach ball is going to sit on top of the water because it's lighter. So do it with oil and, and water and see what happens. Okay, I have, ah, let's add a little more. I have about a half cup of oil. Very cool. Ooh, let's be careful. Carpet's nice. And then our shaving cream, which is so fun. Ooh, that looks like whipped cream. Ready? <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Ooh, oh, oh, there we go. There you go. Ooh. Fill it up. What, does it smell like? It smells really good. It smells like Mexico resorts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I got, oh. Hmm, <laughs> it didn't even move. Barely did anything. <laughs> Maybe we'll add more shaving cream. Make it heavier. It's doing nothing. Doing nothing. So why is that, Kavina? I think the reason why is the shaving cream almost acts like the pop does. The shaving cream actually has a whole bunch of tiny micro bubbles in it. 
which basically weigh nothing at all. So it's almost like <laughs> the pop example again. These are tiny, tiny bubbles. Hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, Kobe, I think you have one more demonstration, don't you? Yeah. All right. So this is my last demonstration. We're going to test different types of cooked eggs. So I have three different cooked eggs oh, right gosh. here. <laughs> they smell wonderful. <laughs> um, so the first one I have is scrambled eggs made by Kavina. And it's just one egg. Just one egg. So to, to like make sure that all the controls are there for when we're testing it. Um, so first one is scrambled eggs. The next one is a hard-boiled egg. And last one is a sunny-side-up egg. <laughs> is that funny? Yes, because the yolk is, like, broken. I broke it. My bad. I tried my best. <laughs> so this is my um, sunny-side-up egg. It looks very good, very appetizing. What are the odds um, that you eat this, Tom? Nope. No, none. <laughs> Zero. None? Yeah, what are the odds? I'll, I'll eat it. you eat it. Without any dares. All three of them. <laughs> Not quite no. all three. <laughs> Cody, right. I actually, while you're loading those up, I have a fun fact about eggs. What's your fun fact? My fun fact about eggs is one egg itself is actually just one cell. Made up of one cell alone. Oh, actually? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's what I've been told. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have three different types. So I think we're going to test it um, all separately. So let's do, let's do a hard-boiled egg against scrambled eggs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dun, yeah. Dun. All right, so um, now th so I'm going to test it out. What do you think, Tom? Do you think your hard-boiled egg will beat the scrambled eggs? I or think the so. Yeah, I you think, think, think the so? hard-boiled egg is going to win. Okay, how about you, Yeah, Kavina? I agree with that because the hard-boiled egg still has a shell. Oh. Right? Yes, it does. Do you want to toss it over? I'll unshell it. Sure. <laughs> Let me just grab my so handy dandy. Let's do um, the fried egg against the scrambled egg. Oop. <laughs> okay. <Kavita>. Yeah. <laughs> Toss it over. Oh my oh, god. This is again for those of you watching at home that have a 3D TV. <laughs> you're in for a treat. Got cotton balls on it. All right, a little more. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Start shelling this. Because All right. in science, if the shell is on this, in science we call that a confounding variable. What's that mean? Big words. <gasps> yeah, it means it's something in the experiment that will skew our results, that will change the result, um, and we didn't want it to. Mm. So right. as so scientists, we weren't expecting for there to be a shell on this egg. Right. Yeah. So exactly. weight it, it would add weight that we didn't want. <coughs> That's called a confounding variable. Yeah, so for those of you uh, that did comment that on our live stream thank you so much for pointing that out because you know i would have just i would just said put the old shell on it so thank you so much all right let's test it so scrambled eggs will be in this first one right here oh yum make sure i get all the meat and proteins <laughs> i think a scrambled egg will weigh less because i think you cook it longer so maybe more of that moisture in the egg will um leave as steam mm -hmm. and then you'll be left with less water so it would weigh less all right and then the sunny side up egg oh yum into this one right here make sure i get all that yolk in Yuck. Oh. <laughs> okay so the, the difference between the sunny side up egg and the scrambled egg is that this one was whipped together right it was mixed with the yolk and the white the mm -hmm. egg whites this one was not this was separated and let's see which one's heavier <gasps> It looks like the scrambled. Yeah. The scrambled, the scrambled is eggs. a little heavier. Interesting. So maybe mixing okay. both the yolk and the egg whites makes it heavier then. Yeah, maybe less water evaporates or something. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, a, there's one more confounding a variable, though, What's that could that? Um, play into effect. We didn't weigh the eggs. You might have had an extra large egg, and I might have used a, a small egg. Oh, so right? what did you use So that's then? another confounding variable, the size of the egg that we cooked. Oh, so where'd you where'd you buy your um, Costco eggs? I mean your your <laughs> eggs. Brands. Here, Kobe. Oh no! It's our, it's our own show. We can't say brand names. <laughs> you know, um, I yeah. I use a medium sized egg. I use a medium sized egg too. Oh, so maybe so there was a compounding. compounding. Perfect. Interesting. All right. Thanks, Tom. No problem. We got a hard boiled egg. Let's put that up against our winner. I say, just in the interest right. of time, we'll put that up against the winner. 
which was the scrambled egg. So let's right. get that sunny side up egg out of there. <laughs> Oof. Okay. <laughs> All right, Dude. testing this hard-boiled egg. That looks like a medium-sized egg too, right, Tom? Uh, we only eat medium eggs in my house. Nice. Here at Eyes, we only use medium eggs. Mm -hmm. You know, some would call eggs nature's jelly beans. <laughs> if you were looking for more jelly bean content. Oh. If you are looking for the episode where we uh, brought in some jelly beans, you can check out episode number one that we did on Tuesday and uh, figure out why we're talking about all these jelly beans. All right, so, Kobe, what do we got? Ooh. Um, ooh, close. I think that the hard-boiled egg is actually heavier, and more gravity is acting upon that hard-boiled egg. Interesting. So, Very yeah, cool. So this one right here is heavier than the scrambled eggs. Was that what you expected, Tom? Uh, you know, <laughs> I was expecting that, because I know when Kavina makes her eggs, she makes them nice and light and fluffy, so maybe more air got trapped into it. Uh, air being a gas, you gonna make it lighter. Nice. Now, um, I know that you were so, uh, you know, set on doing one more, but I think, Kavina, you have something else. I do. You do have yeah. something else. And it looks like our, uh, my scale down there is a little occupied. Yeah. But the last one we are going to do is um, unpopped popcorn kernels and popped popcorn kernels. So once you make your scale, why don't you give this one a try at home? and uh, send us the results Please. on social media. Yeah, we would love to see uh, what weighs more, the kernels or the pop kernels. So, uh, Kavina has uh, a little demonstration of, uh, you were going on and on about uh, like a fire, so what, what is, what's going on there? Yes. What's going okay. on there? So, I'm just gonna clear some space here so you can see it. Now, we did talk uh, about all th three states of matter, mm -hmm. solids, liquids, and a little bit about gases. And we said that gases don't weigh a lot. But, folks at home, you might be surprised to know that gases actually do have mass to them. They are essentially heavy when you have a lot of them put together. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how heavy gases can be. I'm just uh, down in the basement here. <laughs> uh, so while she is down in the basement, uh, <laughs> We would love to hear. Uh, we, we'd love to hear what you think. What were the weird objects that you decided to weigh? Again, our uh, social handle is Eyes Youth. That is Instagram, Facebook, uh, and Twitter, and as well as the good old YouTube. Kavina, you are lighting some tea Hi. candles. Is that correct? Yes, these are tea candles. And I, if you want to do this experiment at home, please make sure you're doing it with a an adult that's going to supervise you. And I recommend if you are going to do this, do it with an adult and maybe do it in the sink just so that fire does stay contained. We also have our fire extinguisher back here in case anything happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have these candles and I'm going to show you how you can put out a fire using gas. Now we don't have a gas here. We have to create that gas with a lim little chemical reaction. Ooh. Yeah. So I've got baking soda. You can find this in your baking cabinet at home probably. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of that in a cup. And in science, we call this special cup a uh, beaker. We have a beaker, baking soda. And then I have just some plain old vinegar here. And in science, uh, scientists call this acetic acid. It's the same thing. Vinegar, you can also find it in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. So this kind of has to happen fast. I'm going to pour the vinegar into the baking soda and gas is going to be produced. All right, let's get that close up. Close up, ready, ready? All right, gas, oh, it's gonna overflow. That's okay, so now I'm gonna pour the gas on the candle and it's gonna go out. Whoa! Whoa. What? So, Kavina, what's going on there? Magic. So yeah, what we're doing is we're <laughs> making carbon dioxide. It's the same gas that plants um, breathe in, it's the same gas that humans breathe out, and carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen, which is in the air right now. Interesting. So what you can do is you can pour the carbon dioxide, and gravity actually pushes it down and surrounds the flame and then puts it out. No way. Yeah. That is a handy little household tip. Thank you so much, Kavina, for uh, okay. demonstrating that. Hey, Kavina, I have a quick question about that. Yeah. So is that how fire extinguishers work? I, I have a feeling yes. Tom, do you know a little more about that? Yes, uh, in a previous life, I was a 
firefighter, uh, probably the head chief of the fire <laughs> hall. And I can tell you now that there are different types of fire extinguishers that use uh, water or they can use solid carbon dioxide. Uh, it's a, like a, it's a yellow powder uh, and it makes a nice, a little, little bit of foam. <laughs> so uh, you heard it from Fireman Tom here today yeah. that there are different types, including a carbon dioxide or CO2 fire extinguisher. Oh. Maybe that's Is just full of vinegar and baking soda. We don't know. It could be. Oh, it says ammonium phosphate. That's another type. There's uh, many different chemicals that can put out fires. Also, I have a question here. Uh, a viewer at home is wondering, what is in the 3D printer behind me? Uh, oh. And this little creature here is what we call a tardigrade, also known as the water bear. They are a microscopic organism. Uh, you could find them pretty much anywhere. If you want to find them and you have a microscope, go into your backyard, find some moss, uh, put it in water, uh, shake it up a little bit and put it underneath a microscope. You'll be able to see them. They swim around and they like to eat plants. They like to eat other microorganisms. And a cool fact about them is that they are basically indestructible. Mm -hmm. uh, they can survive immense pressure, uh, huge, uh, huge high temperatures. Uh, I've even heard, do, do, they, do they survive radiation, Kavina? Yes, they do. They survive radiation. I've also heard that they've been to space and back on the outside of a spacecraft, and they've survived. Actually? Yeah. Can they survive in volcanoes? Why don't you go visit a volcano, Kobe, and test it out for us? All right. See you next week f where I'll be in a vo volcano. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for your questions. Uh, this was Tiffany the Tardigrade. I'm just going <laughs> to put them back uh, in their home. All right. So uh, this was a lot of fun. Can we just, can we just uh, debrief? Debrief, on on yeah. what we, I think a lot happened, so we need to take a step back and appreciate the science behind it all. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So we made these scales. We made the scales to test the difference of masses, right? Mm -hmm. We figured out that mass and volume is not the same thing. Something can take up a lot of volume, like our cotton balls, but they don't have a lot of mass, right? Yeah. True. It's like like a beach ball. A beach ball would be like. A really, really b big in size, but compared to a tennis ball, the tennis ball would be heavier compared yeah. to the beach ball, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. That is <coughs> mind blowing. So, we have this uh, little segment called What Did I Learn This Week? This is where uh, we, the hosts, uh, tell you fun facts that we learned about science and the science community this week. And again, if you have a really cool fact, please let us know. There's our number. Uh, hit us up at 306-570-1013, also at Eyes Youth. There it is. There's that banner, YouTube, Twitter, <laughs> Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, please let us know any cool science tidbits. We're always thirsting for more knowledge. I'm going to start with Kobe. Kobe, what, did, what, what was something cool that you learned this week? So, um, this week, I learned that porcupines actually do swim. Oh, yeah. Perfect. perfect. Right. So they have quills, right, that allows them to stay buoyant. Um, so they're like floating on the surface of water and allows them to swim across ponds and lakes and stuff like that. So porcupine can swim. That's my fun fact. <gasps> Excellent. How about yours, Tom? Well... I learned this uh, very wholesome fact the other day. I learned that flamingos actually uh, have best friends. Uh, they Aww. also have enemies because they're, they're pack animals. They like to congregate in big numbers. And scientists have found that they actually choose specific members to hang out with that they aren't related to. So uh, flamingos have best friends too. Kavina, what Aww. did you learn? Well. First of all, I'd like to say, if I was a flamingo, I would definitely hang out with you, too. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> okay, I would choose you, okay? Um, Pikachu. Oh, what did I learn today? This is cool. Okay, I did some number crunching, some calculations uh, the other night, and I figured out that if my entire body was made of cotton candy, I would only weigh seven pounds. Wow. And oh. that's the same weight as a newborn baby. <laughs> Crazy, right? You would be a newborn I baby. I would be an adult-sized person, but only weigh as much as a newborn baby, if I was made of cotton candy. Interesting. Pretty cool. If you want to know how to do that calculation yourself, let us know, and maybe um, we can explain it next week. What flavor of cotton candy? Ooh, I want to be something like... 
probably my favorite flavor, green apple. Green apple? Yeah. Yeah. Sour green apple. <laughs> Sour green apple. Sour green apple. <laughs> wow, uh, a, a visceral reaction from Kobe, <laughs> which I think is the perfect segue oh, into gosh. our segment, Ask a Scientist, the, the part of the show where we ask one of our resident scientists uh, about themselves, about what they do, or just some fun factoids. I have one uh, right here. Uh, Kavina? Oh, yep. So you, you're in university, correct? But you're not you're not uh, what we would call an undergrad, a, a beginner in university. You already have your degree. So what are what are you doing right now? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I already finished my undergrad degree, which means I've been to university for over four years now, Ooh. and I finished my degree in biology, and now I am working on my master's in microbiology. Whoa. And a master's means you kind of get to pick a science experiment, and you get to spend almost two years focusing on that one experiment. You get to do a whole bunch of stuff, all focus on whatever experiment you want. What's your experiment, Kavina? My experiment is looking at different bacteria found in the ground, in the soil, and how we can use that bacteria to help plants grow. Very cool. Mm. It is really cool. You know, it's very fun. We actually have a question from last, uh, from last show. I guess this was on someone's mind. Uh, do you think the age of a jelly bean <laughs> would affect density. Uh, just for some background knowledge for those of you just uh, tuning into today's show, uh, on Tuesday we measured the density of uh, many different objects and the star of the show was in fact jelly beans. And someone asked, does the age of the jelly bean or does the flavor affect the density at all? We answered the density one, uh, the flavor one, so please go to that episode, uh, the one before this, for the answer. But for this one, do you think the age of the jelly bean would affect density, Kavina? I mean, as a master's student, <laughs> mm -hmm. I have a lot of experience working with jelly beans. It's true. I would say, I would say it does. You think about humans, a newborn baby and a very old person, mm -hmm. are they good at swimming? Probably not as good as a middle-aged person. So maybe old and new jelly beans don't... Uh, Ooh. We'll sink. Well, maybe because like <laughs> for old jelly beans, they might get like not edible and mold might grow on Ooh, those mold. jelly beans. So that might increase the mass of yeah. that jelly bean. So the older, the more mold, the heavier it is compared to like a new jelly bean. Or old jelly beans, they kind of get like old and dried up. And so maybe all that moisture in the jelly bean evaporates and you're left with just a very like old crusty thing. And then um, it's lighter. So maybe it'll float. You know, let us know what you think. Uh, is a newborn jelly bean more dense than an old jelly bean? We'd love to hear uh, your answers. So that is all the time that we have for Ask a Scientist. Thank you so much, Kavina. Oh, uh, so your welcome. knowledge is always welcome here. <laughs> so uh, this show would not be possible without some of our sponsors. Uh, as you can see on the banner behind us, we have Actua, the University of Regina. Um, are our two biggest sponsors, but we'd also like to give a special shout out to Graffiti TV. They are the company that is producing the show. We would uh, be in some real deep water without these folks. So uh, we have a clip of all of our sponsors that we'd love to roll right now. <laughs> 